So you're really excited about getting married and hire someone to plan your wedding. But oh no, the person you've hired turns out to be your awful fiance's psycho ex-girlfriend. Looks like you hired the wrong wedding planner. Yeah. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is Ashley and she's the main character. Hi. She hears an intruder in the house so her awful fiance Brad goes downstairs to check. The intruder has escaped but has left the door open so they call the police. In walks Detective Jones, played by Queen of Lifetime movies, Vivica A. Fox. Hi. She's like, yeah, you probably just left it open. Oh. There was no force entry. So she leaves. She thinks that we overreacted. The next day, Ashley is going to her friend Clarissa's wedding. Brad can't come because there's a big merger at work. The wedding is amazing, and Ashley is desperate to use Clarissa's wedding planner. As luck would have it, the only person Ashley talks to at the wedding is this woman. Mandy Rains. I'm the wedding planner. So Mandy gives Ashley a card. Cut to Brad at work. In walks his boss, Ms. Johnson. The actors who play Brad and Ms. Johnson are two of the worst I've ever seen, yet by no means the worst in this film. Thank you, I appreciate that. But more on that later. Ms. Johnson is like, I know you're getting married, Brad, but focus on work. Leave the planning to your wife and the wedding planner. And he's like, yeah, okay. That night, Ashley tells Brad that she's found a wedding planner and he's like, good, because I need to focus on work. The next morning, Mandy is hiding in the trees outside their house and watches Brad leave for work. She has an appointment with Ashley this morning, but for some reason, she didn't want Brad to see her. Well, we do know exactly why, because the alternative title of this film is My Deadly Ex. So that's any surprise ruined before you've even pressed play. Yep. Anyway, when Ashley goes to make coffee, Mandy looks at some photos of Ashley and Brad together and is clearly furious. Look at that face. She's too angry to even focus on wedding chat, so she goes to the bathroom and starts shaking. Shake, 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 yeah. She needs to take pills to calm herself down. Mandy, are you okay? That's incredibly rude. She's been about 30 seconds and could easily have been having a shit. In which case, she wouldn't want you hanging around outside the door asking questions, would she? No. When she comes out, they start planning the wedding and Ashley tells Mandy they want it at a church. I never realized Brad was so religious. Uh, somehow Ashley hasn't twigged, so they finish their consultation and Mandy leaves. That night, Ashley's telling Brad all about it. In what they're pretending is a restaurant, but it's clearly just the corner of a room. They've tried to cut it with stock footage with an actual restaurant, but it's fuck obviously shot at their house. Then there's this waiter. And dinner is served. What? What sort of waiter says that, then stares weirdly at the customers? In your eyes. This is shit. Anyway, there wasn't even any point in this scene other than to let us know that Brad has agreed to let Ashley hire the wedding planner. Meanwhile, back at Mandy's apartment, she's doing the stalker head replacement thing on Ashley and Brad's photos and imagining she's marrying Brad instead. The next day, Detective Jones is back. Apparently, the neighbors have called to report a strange car on the street. Okay. But the conversation quickly turns. So, wedding plans going smoothly? What? Really? Is this how you'd expect the police to behave? I don't think so. Anyway, Ashley's like, yeah, we just hired a wedding planner. And she's like, oh, okay, bye. When she leaves, Mandy arrives through the back door. While they're going over wedding plans, Ashley leaves the room, allowing Mandy to take photos of all her passwords that Ashley has stuck to her laptop. What an idiot. <laughs> Mandy's like, Ashley, you need to look at the centerpieces. But she's like, I can't. I'm on the road for the next couple of days. Oh, well, why don't I just give you a spare key? I trust you with my life. And I was thinking of ways that I could get inside. On her way out, Mandy makes her plans clear to the audience. You don't have to type all that out. Anyway, the next day, Mandy is back hiding in the trees. When Ashley and Brad leave, she goes into the house with the centerpieces. Oh, and she's also downloaded the contents of their hard drive and placed a hidden camera in their bedroom. Later that night, Mandy uses the cameras to watch Ashley and Brad, and then they bang. Although we don't see Mandy rubbing one out the footage, it's certainly implied. The next day, Mandy is coming around for a meeting with Ashley and Brad, but Brad needs to go for a run first. When he gets back from his run... Hi, babe. You must be Brad. Even though he obviously knows who she is, for some reason he says nothing about it and goes upstairs. But he's clearly worried about something. Ashley needs to cut the appointment short as she's getting a migraine. Poor thing. So Mandy leaves, but watches Ashley go upstairs through this stained glass window. Later that night, Ashley asks Brad why he was being so weird around Mandy, and he still doesn't mention knowing her. I'm sorry, I, 
I don't know what came over me. So clearly, Brad has something to hide. The next day at work, he starts doing some digging on Mandy and sees that her business is registered to this big house. So he goes round there. Nobody answers the door, so he lets himself in. All right. <laughs> This woman comes down and she's like, fuck you doing in my house? I'm Brad Curtis. You better have a seat. She's like, Mandy used to live here, but she's mental. She said you were a fiance, but then I found out her entire life was a lie. So I kicked her out. She tells me if I tell anyone about this, that she'll kill me. Oh dear. The next day, Ashley is meeting Mandy for cake tasting at this bakery. Again, I'm pretty sure this is actually their house. Brad is watching them from the hallway. I mean, another part of the bakery and follows Mandy to her real home. What the hell do you think you're doing, Amanda? She's like, you're never going to get away from me, Brad. I'm really struggling with the idea that two women are so desperate to be with Brad. Yes, he's got a nice house, but he looks like an absolute twat. Yes. I assumed at this point we'd find out Brad's secret, but there isn't one. So there was no reason at all why when he first saw at his house, he didn't say, okay, that's my psycho ex, get a different wedding planner. This is shit. Speaking of shit, we're back at the restaurant. They've got their favorite corner table with no windows, but this time they're with Clarissa and her new husband. Ashley's like, so Clarissa, I hired your wedding planner. Who? Mandy Rains? Huh? I've never heard that <laughs> name before in my life. But you're kidding, right? And dinner is served. No, the waiter wasn't actually there that time, but he's too good to just make one appearance. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So now Ashley knows Mandy's been lying, and when she gets home, she's about to call her. But Brad finally decides to tell her what's going on. She was my fiance. Oh my god, what? She's out of her mind, I'm telling you. Ashley's like, why didn't you say anything earlier? I just I didn't think it was relevant. What? <laughs> relevant? I'd say that's pretty relevant. Yes. Unbelievable. In the morning, all is forgiven and Ashley is ignoring Mandy's calls. She decides to tell Detective Jones what's been going on. Detective Jones is like, yeah, nothing we can do without any proof. And the next day, Ashley gets a call from her mum. Hi, mum. Oh, mum. <laughs> what are you talking about? What email? What? Send me the email. That's right, the email's been sent to Minister O'Brien. <laughs> Well, I just don't understand how you got my password in the first place. Really? It's literally sellotaped to your laptop. You little whore. Oh, yeah. And Mandy's also sent the email to all Brad's colleagues and clients. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice but to suspend you without pay, I'm afraid. So Brad gets home and he's livid. Those pictures were on our hard drive. I'm going to call Detective Jones. So they go to the police station, and here's where we meet Jules, the forensic expert, another appalling actor. I found your problem. Does anyone know what a keystroke logger is? Yes, of course. These programs are designed to run secretly. You should change your passwords. But as far as finding out who did it, that's a lost cause. Oh. Detective Jones is now convinced that she has enough evidence to speak to Mandy. Good. But when she goes to her apartment, the maintenance guy says she's moved out. Back at home, Ashley and Brad are talking on the sofa, and Mandy is watching through the window. The next day, Brad has a job interview, and Ashley is going to wait at home for the locksmith. Speak of the devil. Yep, here he is. The happiest and most over-enthusiastic locksmith ever. New lock on the front door and one on the garage, is that right? That's right. All right, easy enough. I wonder if there's anything else they might want. We'll get the lock changed for you, no problem. But if I were you, I would think about getting a security system. My wife and I just got one last summer. Uh, well, they hook right up to the emergency services, to the internet. Affordable, easy to use. Great, uh, I have to go on. He finishes the work pretty quick and gives Ashley the new keys. Remember what I told you about that security system. That's the best investment you'll ever make. For me, the locksmith is worse than the forensic expert and the waiter. Let me know in the comments who you think the worst actor is. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Unfortunately, when the happy locksmith gets home, Mandy is at his house. When he's in the shower, she stabs him and takes a new key to Ashley and Brad's house from his toolbox. That night, Ashley has fallen asleep on the couch and Mandy is watching through the window again. She lets herself in with a new key and wakes Ashley. Hi. She's like, Brad's mine, not yours. Ashley tries to run away, but Mandy's brought chloroform. When she's out for the count, Mandy hears that Brad has tried to call Ashley. So she uses her phone to text him saying, sorry, I was asleep, got a migraine and going to bed. Be quiet when you get home. Mandy then drags unconscious Ashley upstairs to the spare bedroom and ties her up. How impressive. Brad gets home, has a drink, then sneaks quietly upstairs to bed where he thinks he sees Ashley under the covers. Hi, Brad. Luckily, Ashley has managed to untie herself and grab the hammer from the spare room drawer. Come again? Apparently, that's where they keep it. Oh, I see. 
They call Detective Jones, and when she arrives with this weird policeman who walks like he shat himself, Mandy has gone. Looks like you hired the wrong wedding planner. Yeah. At an unspecified time later, Detective Jones has called Brad and Ashley to her office. The police still haven't found Mandy, but she's got something else to tell them. Found something in your bedroom. It was a hidden camera, and it was pointed at your bed. She just wanted to watch what we were doing. And dinner is served. Yeah, she just wanted a watch. No harm in that. Right. Detective Jones tells them to get married and forget all about Mandy Rains. And here we are at the wedding and everyone's really happy. But oh no, Mandy's here too. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.